We are live broadcasting on Google Plus and YouTube. My name is Seth David. I'll be your host for the next hour or so. Excited to bring back Fishbowl Inventory. This time we're going to be talking with Heber. Right? Did I get that right this time? Yeah, you got that right this time. All right. Heber Billings from Fishbowl Inventory is the VP of Product Development. So this is the man in the know when it comes to what's going on with these products, how they work, and what you can do with them and how to get the most out of them. And specifically, uh, we've been talking a lot on the air and off the air lately about the cloud. In fact, the cloud, you, you, if you're like me, you're probably almost sick of hearing the term, the cloud. But that's all you hear about these days is everything's going into the cloud, and that's because everything is going into the cloud. So uh, Fishbowl is uh, smart enough to know that they want to head in this direction. And to that end, we're going to be taking a good look today at Fishbowl's latest cloud application. And uh, I'm going to basically give it over to Heber to uh, fill us in. Heber, first of all, before we get into the sort of meat of things, tell us a little bit about who you are, how you got to Fishbowl, why you got to Fishbowl, what you've been doing for them, and then we can start talking about the product. All right. I can do that. Um, we got into Fishbowl, let's see, graduated from college, got a, a degree in mathematics and decided that uh, computers was where I wanted to end up. And so um, uh, it was right after the tech bubble pretty much burst and I was still uh, naive enough to look at the, the, the first startup that came my way, but it kind of turned out to my benefit because I found Fishbowl here. They'd started up and, and had a rocky start, which you talked about last time, but um, they've been really good to us since. I mean, we were able to hit the ground running when I started on. Started on as a, a lonely, a lowly uh, junior developer and started plugging away features and implementing and designing and, and worked on pretty much every aspect that is Fishbowl right now. So I've had my fingers in every pie you can imagine that, that – uh, every corner of the code that we have here. Gotcha. And so as, as product developer, I, I would think you have a pretty interesting perspective on things. For example, um, I would imagine you would be the person ultimately who gets feedback that may have come originally from customers to give you ideas about what people are looking for, what to develop uh, in terms of evolving the products that you've got as well as developing new ones. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah. Um, myself, I'm usually in on those meetings. Uh, I think you've talked to, to Kevin Batchelor. He's our project manager, and um, he's, he's actually the VP over the, over the product. And he filters through all those requests and, and counts up, finds out the importance and tallies votes and does all the, the sort of stuff on the features. He then brings them to the meeting and be like, here's, here's our top three, our next big three. Big three or next big three things to, to work on, and and we sit down uh, together with with a couple of um, people who represent customers and, and a couple of developers, and we talk about well, this is how we'd solve that problem for you guys. How how is this going to work? How does this feel? You know, what's the best way we can deliver this solution to you guys? Right, and how I mean, besides the obvious traditional customers submitting feedback to you, are there any are there any other ways that you guys get? ideas about what you might be able to do to improve your products? Um, a lot of from customers. We get a lot from uh, uh, resellers as well. We have a, a VAR network and reseller uh, type network and um, those type of people have a lot of feedback. They work with a lot of different types of companies and so they, they have a lot of good ideas of some, some a lot of the smaller features that would just go a long ways. A lot right. of times the customers are, we need this really big, big project done, and the resellers realize that, hey, if we can just give them this little corner, that'll make 100 people happy. Gotcha, gotcha. It's, 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 I think it's always fascinating. So from, from your perspective, are you, are you actually writing code to develop the software, or are you heading that, that department up, or how does, like, what do you I'm, actually do day to day? <laughs> I, I, I do it all. Uh, that's one thing that as we... Uh, developed Fishbowl as a company, we didn't want someone who just manages. We wanted to make sure that anyone who's over development is down there in the trenches, you know, programming the code, filling in, fixing bugs, finding out, debugging code, do, doing the whole works all the way through. So I still do that every day as well as manage the department. 
Gotcha. And all right, so let's 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 talk about what we're kind of here to talk about. Uh, you know, obviously everything's going in the direction of the cloud. It it makes sense. It's a no-brainer that uh, you know if I'm using an inventory program, you know, QuickBooks. There's more and more talk about going into the cloud. There's the QuickBooks Online Edition, and then of course there are hosted solutions, which is a way of hosting a desktop edition of QuickBooks in the cloud. Bottom line is. In, uh, Fishbowl inventory, the number one inventory add-on that works with QuickBooks, it makes sense. You guys have to follow suit and get into the cloud. So tell me a little bit about that. I mean, at what point do you think you guys kind of initially realized that uh, it was time to start moving in this direction and, and, and sort of acting on that? And then I guess you can kind of use that as a lead-in to start talking specifically about the, you know, the, the product that we're here to talk about today. Yeah. Um, well, it's probably about three years ago we realized that we really needed to, to keep our eye on this. Um, business is usually not on the cutting edge. They like to, to they like the stability, so they wait till a few things get a little a little more stable before they jump in. So we knew we had a little bit of time before before we needed something. Um, so we were looking at we were doing some tests, trying some test beds as far as different technologies we could apply and try and and do out. And it was about a year ago that. We, we kind of forked and we went in two directions. Number one is we provided uh, Fishbowl hosted services. So we do have a hosted services that works with, with QuickBooks as hosted. So we were able to fill that gap and that happened really fast. We were able to get that. And then, oh, I guess it was a little more than a year ago that we, we forked off and we started creating Fishbowl Pipeline. Um, one of the main key points we wanted to make is we just didn't want to duplicate the code on up on the cloud. Uh, that that then gives the, the customer you know, two choices, either A or B, to go with. We wanted something that could help all the customers. So for our first spring, we decided to make uh, spring into the, the CRM part. So Fishbowl Pipeline started out as, as Fishbowl's attempt on the cloud. We wanted on the cloud. We created a CRM that integrates with uh, Fishbowl inventory. And that way they could use both. Fishbowl inventory still process that they could get their CRM stuff on the cloud. Now with that, we were able to release uh, just last week uh, Fishbowl inventory 2012 plus, and that pushed a lot of inventory features and things that Fishbowl inventory does up into the cloud so that people can get that benefit too. And that's kind of the direction we're doing now that we have we have a stable product up on the cloud. We're trying to pull some of those features and information that people have in their warehouse and that their sales guys use. We want to pull that up into the cloud so that way they can get all those benefits as well. Okay. Now, does this cloud app integrate with uh, QuickBooks Online Edition? Will it integrate with the hosted solution of QuickBooks? Right now, it integrates with Fishbowl Inventory, and Fishbowl Inventory then integrates with QuickBooks. Okay. And it's it's... It's quite seamless how, how it transitions through there, saying how there's nothing really in, in pipeline that you need in QuickBooks yet. It still has to be processed through Fishbowl in order to get all your inventory functions and stuff taken care of. Pipelines kind of handles that front end right now. Uh, we're still looking into that, and obviously we'll be making the leap to where Pipeline is able to integrate with, with other editions of, of QuickBooks straight, straight across. Gotcha. And then you mentioned that you had the pipeline was also the CRM that you have in the cloud. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah, that's so right. Will that piece integrate with QuickBooks customer database, or is it separate? Uh, right now, it's separate, but there we're definitely in talks with customers. And and Kevin Batchelor, our, our PM over the project, he's he's in talks and gathering data to see what what people need right now as far as integrations. As far as right now, they're able to do all their CRM functions in Pipeline. They're then able to pull that into Fishbowl to get the order picked and shipped. And then when the accounting's ready, that sends over to QuickBooks from, from Fishbowl. Okay, so now walk me through um, you know, Pipeline, the cloud-based inventory part. As far as what does that do for me when I'm using that product? I mean, obviously, it centralizes it in the cloud so that anybody can get access to it from anywhere. But I'm thinking in terms of the actual physical inventory movement process, right? I buy inventory from my supplier. It's in my warehouse. Then later on, I go and sell it. It comes off the shelf, and it goes out. Now, I know, of course, the you know Fishbowl Local will, will handle that for me. Basically, I post my sales orders in Fishbowl. It feeds that back to QuickBooks. 
right? Then that sales order becomes an invoice. It gets fed back to QuickBooks. Everything else from there is handled through QuickBooks. Receiving the payment, or does do you receive payments into Fishbowl? I forget. Yeah, <laughs> Fishbowl little... can receive payments, or they can receive them directly into into uh, QuickBooks. Okay, and so now if I'm using the cloud-based solution, it's basically the same thing now, except people can access it from anywhere as long as they have an internet connection. So I perform those functions in the cloud, then it syncs to Fishbowl Local, and then Fishbowl Local uh, syncs to QuickBooks, correct? Uh, pretty close. Not all those features are up in the cloud yet. The cloud handles more or less the sales side as of, as of right now. Um, they're able to, to handle all their leads up in, in Fishbowl Pipeline, up in the cloud. They handle their leads. They're able to, to work on their, their pipeline, so to say, until they're able to make that sell. They're then able to uh, uh, check inventory levels in pipeline and be able to dish a quote out to to their customer. And then okay. once that quote is ready, that's when Fishbowl inventory on their local network takes over, and the the warehouse is still using Fishbowl inventory in their their local server, local warehouse, in order to to process that, in order to do all the picking and all the shipping out and everything, and then sends all the um, Financial data over to QuickBooks. Okay, so so just so quickly, so the orders can be placed. I can book the order in the cloud solution. Yes, that's that's currently in a, in a high level beta um, mm -hmm. area right now. But any Fishbowl Pipeline customer is able to see that, play with that, and um, give us feedback on that. Okay, now one thing I'm guessing people are going to immediately want to know about something like this, especially now that you're putting it in the cloud, is what about integrating that with my e-commerce shopping cart? Yep, uh, we programmed a Fishbowl Pipeline from the start to have that in mind. It has a full-fledged API that's completely fleshed out in order to get their leads and stuff into it. Um, as a working example of that, we have released a, a um, an iPhone or iPad app uh, called Fishbowl Surfboard. That is a complete contact list, and they're able to, to play with all their contacts in, on, on that app. And, and be able to send that up to the cloud where they're then able to, to send that down to Fishbowl. Gotcha. So, I mean, because what I envision what would be the ideal situation, I would think, for any small business owner who's selling inventory is to be able to somehow say, all right, somebody just went into my shopping cart, placed an order for 10 widgets, and I want that to feed over to Fishbowl so it will deduct properly from my inventory and update everything. I mean... Yep, that's, that's definitely where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, Fishbowl does have an SDK as well that many of our third-party um, partners have integrations with shopping carts that jump directly into there. Um, we don't have any integrations yet with Pipeline, but all of the, the connection pieces are there for when we are ready to, to plug those things together. Gotcha. Okay. And then, uh, all right, well, you know what? Why don't you um, give us a screen share, show us a little bit sure. about what Pipeline looks like, and tell me why I got to have it. <laughs> all right. Let's see, switching over. So here's uh, Fishbowl Pipeline. I guess here's the, uh, the, the home page there, nice little welcome letter. Up here we have a, a dashboard where, can you see my mouse pointer okay? I sure can, yeah. Okay, uh, where people receive their messages, such as if a new lead gets assigned to a salesperson, they would see that in a, in a drop down and stuff. And then here's their daily tasks that they have set up um, to do. As I like well that. As, Do a little dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is developer test data. I didn't quite have time to make a uh, a, a proper demo. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have a list of their opportunities, which makes it nice of this is what they're expecting to bring in for the rest of the month. Type gotcha. Thing. So over here in the the leads, they're able to to search for their leads and obviously create new ones. And as we see, Seth David is very interested in whatever Who's I have to sell. Guy? Yeah, oh, crazy. Um, <laughs> so this is just standard standard CRM features. Mm -hmm. uh, so after I've been talking to to uh, Seth for a while, um, let's see, it did hang out. Can save down. It's all Ajaxed up, so it's it's you know really fast for people as they as they function in. I'm able to put notes in on that lead and stuff. I'm able to assign tasks. And then once I get that, I'm able to convert this lead and be like, oh, Seth's ready to, to, to purchase some stuff. So I'm able to create a contact, create an account, and then say, oh, yeah, he wants the, the full Monty, everything that Fishbowl has to offer 
for lots of money. This is a good proposal, and we're going to get that Friday. Got it. Does I'm it assign ready. a percentage based on the status, so you can kind of estimate percentage-wise what you think you have coming in? Or um, We don't have that yet. I know Kevin has that on his list as far as features that, that people have talked about, and it's a certain level of reporting mm -hmm. on there. And so we, we don't have quite, quite that yet. It just shows you the grand total up at the top. Gotcha. Okay. So here we have an account view. We can see all the contacts and opportunities we have with them and, and, uh, and what's coming through. And then we can add some more notes, and we see that the leads were able to come through. So um, other than that, you know, it's a lot of, of CRM features. One thing that's really nice that we added in is something we call a fresh list, which is when you come in to view your accounts, I click on the little accounts button. Um, I'm not seeing all of my accounts here. I only see the, the top, you know, tw I think it's set at 50 by default, uh, accounts that I've viewed, the last 50 accounts that I've viewed. That way you don't have to go, oh, every time I have to go search for Seth David and stuff because I only have, you know, these people I'm working with. He's always going to be at the top if I'm talking to him every day. Right. So that's a, that's a pretty nice feature, and if you want to get back to your view, you can do a big search, and that, that pulls in all your accounts and information there. Got it. And then we have our, our inventory side then where we're able to put in either, you know, you can use it standalone. You can start putting in inventory parts, create new ones. Um, it's pretty basic right now into there, which then you're able to use in, in our quote module. So in here okay. in our quotes, we're like, oh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and send a quote to Seth right here. We give it a, a number. And then we can add in some products and add those in and go ahead and save it. There we go. Then it gives you the price and the total and you're able to add taxes and stuff like that. Onto mm -hmm. Now going back to the inventory part, I assume if I'm already using Fishbowl inventory that this will sync up with that to grab all my inventories? Yep. In Fishbowl inventory, there's a nice little pipeline button that users will be able to see. It'll ask them for some login information to make sure that they get the right pipeline <laughs> database to connect to, and it'll upload all, all your products up, up here into pipelines so you're able to make quotes using them. Gotcha. Now, this is always interesting because I, you know, especially since you're the uh, developer, um, I'm curious, and since I have the advantage of having the opportunity of having you here, I might as well ask, um, what goes into the thought process? Like, I, I love the interface. It's a nice, clean interface. What goes into this process? I mean, as a developer, I assume you also bring in, I mean, I'm, and I'm kind of getting granular here in terms of what goes into the development of a product like this. Um, I assume you get graphic designers, and does somebody actually sit down and kind of draw a picture of what they think this should look like? Like, how do you get from saying, okay, we want this pipeline product, it's going to work like a CRM, and it's going to integrate the inventory piece. How do you get from that concept to what we're seeing here? Well, um, we like to uh, basically let a lot of our developers try things out. And so... Uh, it started off with with the project manager saying, "Here's you know, here's the first features like I talked about in the meeting. Here, here's what they are, and he kind of draws up a vision, like a couple screenshots, draws them out on paper, and says, you know, I really want, I want, I want, I want, you know, a nice a dashboard up at the top where people can see their most important information, and then, and you know, we gotta have a search function, you know, that's." right prominent up at the top but not overpowering the screen maybe but he doesn't really get into the granular detail really we let our developers sort of explore what you know what their options are of you know let's let's see how it works having you know a, a hideable search thing that way they don't need to have it on the screen all the time if they've got a lot of different inventory parts they're looking at and and one of the first things when we get a new developer on the project we usually have them uh, switch some themes up and and sort of create a theme, a look and feel. That way they can sort of get familiar with the project and and sort of, you know, explore a creativity side, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and developers really like that. They like to be able to see. I mean, they're not graphics designers at the least. Uh, we had, obviously, the logo professionally done. We had some icons done. But... But there was a lot of, of test driving first to see what the developers could, could have fun with. 
Right. I mean, look, I've worked with groups where <clears throat> we had, uh, like, it seemed like hundreds of emails going back and forth just to get the exact right wording for a web page. I can only imagine it's that much more intense when you're trying to develop something like this. Um, it's it's not so. We, as uh, one of the big aspects as far as the development side we do, we do, we follow uh, agile methodologies. And so one of the key principles in dev is we prefer face-to-face -face communication. So if mm -hmm. you're going to make a, any sort of big decision, you need to be talking to the people who care about it face-to-face. -face. And that cuts out a lot of that time. I mean, hours and hours spent emailing can be solved in 15 minutes when you get in a room and with a developer and at the computer right there and be like, well, let's look at this, look at this. All right, everyone who, you know, who has a say in it, what do you guys think? And they're able to come up with a solution right there. Got it. Okay, interesting. So, all right. So, let me kind of let you continue. So, you, we we looked at um, we looked at everything except the administration panel there. I think. All right. And the quote I'm assuming once you're done, it emails an estimate to me in in a nice form, a nice template. Yep. Okay. And then, yeah. And then once once the quote's been. Uh, uh, I think, let's see, yeah, these quotes, they're picked up in Fishbowl. Fishbowl will pick them up as sales orders, which are then issued and pushed through picking and shipping and, and all that sort of stuff, and the inventory numbers are adjusted at that point. So that's where that's where quote ends up running through. Okay, and then over there on the right, I notice I have some options there. History, I assume, will show, that'll show any previous quotes that were sent to me? Uh, no, that actually shows the history of the one we're on. If we if we open this up and say, uh, you know what, he he lives at um, 10 La La Street. We're able to give that a save. We're able to see uh, a history of what actually happened. Oh, it shows all the changes, almost like an audit trail. Yep. Yeah, it's cool. the audit trail, right? Yeah. And so all the changes, who changed them, what time, and old and new values, and all the way down. Got it. And you know, now I'm just curious, and I kind of want to back up here to about a 30,000-foot view. Um, how did you guys get from working on the development of you know inventory software to saying, you know, we, we should develop a CRM? I mean, I, I understand logically it integrates because... You know, you're dealing with a, a software that kind of inter interfaces directly with customers, so it kind of makes sense. But I'm curious, you know, um, from your head, you know, what was the thought process into saying, hey, you know, we should do a CRM? Um, well, the thought process actually came a lot from our customers and, and those uh, resellers I was telling you about. They were asking, we have in Fishbowl, we have uh, what we call the customer module. It's similar to QuickBooks Customer Center. You know, they're able to enter their customers and enter in addresses and phone numbers, but that's pretty much the extent of the limitations. And so our customers were asking for a lot more space to put this CRM information. Some of them were asking specifically for CRM. Other customers didn't know what they were asking for. They were just saying, I need to be able to keep notes on every time I call my customer, and I need to be able to, to organize a spot where I can see quotes for my customers and those type of things. And... Uh, it, the demand basically got big enough that when we knew we had to go to the cloud, we're like, well, we don't want to overlap features because then we're just competing with ourselves. Let's let's give the customer something they are asking for, uh, and CRM functionality. So we were able to to you know zone in on that sort of feature set. Okay, and so as long as we're on that topic, are you able to uh, share with us like a demo of uh, the Fishbowl inventory, the local edition, so we can kind of see what goes on there? Because I know within that product. I can already keep track of a lot of like different customer locations, can I? Um, you can keep track of your own, oh yeah, different customers' locations, yeah, different addresses for the customer and things like that. I actually don't have Fishbowl Local installed on this computer at this time. Okay. No worries. Um, so then, just, uh, you know what, I'll, let me just kind of open it up to you. Um, I mean, tell us more about the product. What do we, you know, what do we need to know? <laughs> um, well, Fishbowl, I mean, Fishbowl handles the warehouse needs, which is nice because 
it's it's not really on the cloud yet and we're kind of adjusting how we want to do that it's nice that it's not on the cloud because you're in a warehouse it's it's fast it's stable you have complete control over it your internet goes down you you still can manage your warehouse which is the very important thing for your warehouse people and so we kind of like how we have it split up to where your business essentials in the office you're able to do in the office kind of closed circuit but you still have then fishbowl pipeline up in the cloud where you're able to, when you need that broader view, as far as being able to access your information on the road or at a, at a convention center, so to say, um, or in the office or in the, out in the warehouse, you have all those options available to you for, for fishbowl pipeline needs. Right. All right. And then tell me about the future, though. I mean, as a product developer, I imagine there's some stuff you can't really talk about because it's just conceptual. But is there anything you can talk about that's not out yet, that's in development, that's exciting? Well, you see, the quote module, that was fairly limited. Uh, we have a lot more features coming into there to give people the ability to, to really empower their sales guys out in the field. They're able to, to give proper quotes, do it fast, do it reliable. Um, we're playing with a lot of different app options. Uh, we don't. We we want to hone in and only provide really the, uh, the the best sort of features that people need. We want people to be able to to sort of. Oh, there's the one example we're trying to work through is the example of the sales guy, and but he has a lot of inventory in his truck that he's driving around as well. And that's a feature, uh, sort of a use case that we really want to hone in on, making sure the sales guy knows that, hey, I can, I can sell any of this stuff out of my truck right now, or I can check inventory numbers in my warehouse to say, yeah, I can get that for you tomorrow. And those are the type okay. of pieces we want to, to solve for our customers. You know, that brings up some interesting uh, questions, actually, in terms of you know, the future and where this is all going. Because I, I, I can imagine that you know, I have clients, let's say, who have, uh, you know, they're shipping products out to people all over the country, right? And ideally, then, they, like you just mentioned, then they have drivers who are actually physically delivering the stuff from, you know, the warehouse to, and, and, and you know, to, to the customer, wherever it's going. And I, it's interesting, I was talking about this in, a, in another context, different kind of business, but the same idea where you're having people go from one place to another, and <clears throat> you want to sort of optimize the efficiency of this sort of thing. I mean, I'm wondering if any thought at this point yet, and it seems, it sounds to me as I'm saying this, like I'm almost getting, a, even for, now, for, for our times, a little bit ahead of the times, but the idea of having a system in place, of course it's in the cloud, that's centralized, that allows me to put an order in, and, the, you know, and then there's an algorithm in place that basically looks at it and says, okay, well, the customer's located here, the nearest warehouse is here, um, we have a shipment going out tomorrow at 9 a.m. Let's make sure we can get it on that shipment so that we can get it out. You know, the idea ultimately is I want to get my product in the customer's hand as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. How much thought, I'm, I'm curious, is being put into these kinds of things within, this, within you know, inventory tracking software in terms of optimizing the efficiency so I can get my product into my customer's hands as fast as possible? Um, that's a good question. A lot of the time, the, when we're talking about efficiency, we're usually talking mostly in the warehouse. Like Fishbowl has a couple features of uh, pick routing is is one term I've heard a couple terms for it, where basically it says, well, when you want to pick this order or this collection of orders, what's the best way to walk through my warehouse? And Fishbowl is able to to help you to do that. It obviously needs to gather a little bit more information than than just location names. But once you're able to enter, enter that in, you're able to say, well, if I walk through my warehouse this way each time, it's going to give me a list of here's all the parts you need and the quantities in the order that I will see them as I walk through my warehouse once. And so those type of efficiencies help to get the orders out to the, to the users, um, as well as, as we don't have a lot of, of automation as far as, as rushing, but we give the user a lot of options to be able to say, you know, oh, this customer just put one in and I'm able to see all the orders from my customers and be able to attach as far as the picks and ship them out together and those type of things. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I think that's ultimately 
you know, the direction everybody's going to want to see these kinds of things going is just how do I optimize even my truck driver's route to make sure that, you know, I'm taking advantage of the most efficient possible route from the warehouse to all the customer's location. At what point does it go outside of a range where it's more efficient to bring in another driver? I always think about these kinds of things because yeah. I'm talking to my clients constantly. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. The context in which this came up was um, uh, actually a mobile pet groomer. Um, where he's trying to optimize his groomer's routes so that as appointments come in, you know, it's but it's the same idea. You, you mm -hmm. see where I'm going? That, you know, we know we have somebody who has to get from A to B to C to D to E all within the time frame of a day, and how do we optimize that? And now that you have all this geolocation tracking as orders come in, I would think it would be, you know, a, a logical progression maybe two or three years from now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that would definitely be, as, as a developer, that sounds like really fun stuff to work on, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there you go. So I gave you some ideas to work on for the future. <laughs> what, so, what uh, a, oh, sorry. I was going to say, go of, talking about things in the future, one of our, our bigger challenges, I guess, that we're constantly trying to work with is uh, connectivity. I mean, a lot of times people are in their house and they think, you know, oh, that's easy. You know, everyone has a Wi-Fi and connection but it can really be quite a challenge out in the business world as they're driving around in trucks and there's some dead zones or they're in a warehouse and they don't get any good reception and we don't want them, uh, all the information to be stuck on a cloud that you can't access. So that's one of the directions we're, we're working with as far as with your phone apps and stuff, making sure you have access to the information you need on your phone when you need it, even if can, connectivity is, is down and being able to sync up after and those type of things. Gotcha. You know, and when I was reading, by the way, on this, uh, you know, on the, on, on, the, on the pipeline product, I'm looking now at the page on my other screen. I'm not seeing it, but I thought I read somewhere something about a, a, like a UPS integration. There it is. Uh, UPS ready integration to increase convenience. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, that's going into Fishbowl Inventory, our, our warehouse and manufacturing edition there. Uh, I'm actually working on that hands-on. That's my project that I'm working on right now. And we're working with UPS in order to, to be uh, certified as UPS ready. That's a full UPS integration where they're able to get rates as far as, hey, I have the sales order. How much is it going to cost to ship based on all the weights and stuff that's in there? And they're able to get those, those rates from UPS as well as then being able to, in shipping, being like, everything's packed. Here's the list of boxes. Fishbowl knows how much stuff weighs, so it knows how much the boxes weighs. It's able to get the rates as well as print out all the labels for it. That way your UPS guy is able to, to show up, make the few scans they need, and you're off, and you all the pricing and stuff's done there for you. Got you. And then another thing, and I'm just I'm actually just kind of going down your page now because I, I know that there are things I wanted to make sure we covered today. Um, uh, you guys are offering a free one-year pipeline subscription. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, that's uh, this month as part of a promotion for people who buy Fishbowl Mobile, uh, or not Fishbowl Mobile, sorry, Fishbowl Inventory. As they buy, they're able to, to get a free pipeline subscription. Uh, pipeline is cloud-based, so it's, it's, it's got a SaaS model for it. Um, but for this month only, they're able to, to purchase, get pipeline, able to try it for that year, uh, see how they like it, and, and see how it improves you know, their ROI and they'll be able to continue purchasing it next year. Gotcha. And then um, the other thing that's on the page is it talks about, uh, you know, in addition to the cloud accessibility, uh, Fishbolt Inventory 2012 is going to include multiple location tracking, auto purchase orders, and unlimited tracking types and custom fields. Tell us about that. Yeah, those are features that have been in Fishbowl for, for a good number of years, but they're kind of lesser known as far as our new customers. You know, a lot of people don't look for unlimited tracking types uh, when they're looking at inventory. So there are a few things we wanted to highlight for 2012 plus that our customers, once they dig down, get a few demos of Fishbowl, they're like, oh, I really like that feature, but they didn't really know that that was something they, they should have been looking for to, to meet their warehouse needs. So those type of things really help out. We wanted to bring those to light a little, a little sooner than midway through a demo. Gotcha. Okay, so multiple location. You're talking about if I have several warehouses and I really yeah. need to know the inventory levels in each of those warehouses separately, and then I also need to be able to consolidate them for balance sheet purposes. Yep, it handles those. It handles you know multiple, not just warehouses, but if you have multiple retail locate locations, 
and just one big warehouse that you have to restock all your retail locations with. Um, any sort of configuration like that, we're able to handle those multiple locations and, and show you inventory levels for each of those just fine. Right. Now, speaking of that, I think one of the biggest challenges, especially for companies where it's all about inventory, uh, is probably taking the inventory. So based on feedback you get from customers and, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, let's just call it, you know, complaints they may have or, or frustration struggles that they encounter and the feedback you get related to that, what do you see in terms of the future of trying to, I would imagine you're always trying to come up with ways or think of ways to improve the inventory taking process for your customers. I mean, at some point, you're never going to get out of this. Somebody has to sit there and count the stuff. And then it's a matter of how do you get that resulting count into the software in the most efficient and accurate way possible. There's a couple techniques. It's very interesting because as, as a developer, we come up with a, a lot of systems and, and ways of which we can better handle these problems and stuff. But when it comes down to it, uh, our customers really don't like it, uh, cycle counting and, and counting their inventory, so they don't really ask for a lot of features for it. It's sort of, it's sort of always brushed to the side. They, they don't even want to remember that they have to do that. But we do have some ways to, to making it better. One of them is using ABC codes, and Fishbowl can help you to, to do those. ABC codes are, are um, basically uh, an inventory process where you mark your inventory on uh, the, the fastest move cycle because the, the, your, your inventory, you move in and out all the time, those are the ones that are most likely to get off. And so Fishbowl has an auto ABC wizard that will walk you through the process where you can assign those ABC codes um, to your parts and then you're able to pull reports saying, okay, give me my A, my A list parts so I can go cycle them and you can go cycle count those you know, once a month and then my B's I do every six months and my C's I only do once a year type of process. So by instead of having to go through all your warehouse, Fishbowl says, well, here's the ones you probably need to worry about the most. Another, go ahead. No, no, I was just, no, go on, finish your thought, because I, my, my next question is going to kind of have us shifting. It'll be on the topic of taking inventory, but shift. Okay. Uh, the another solution we have for it is we have Fishbowl Mobile, and that's it's a little different than a phone. It uses a, um, a warehouse designed, a, a durable uh, commercial grade, uh, Windows uh, mobile device, similar to what you'd see in Walmart or Home Depot as they're taking inventory for those type of things. And um, that's designed for the warehouse. And it's designed to be able to do those cycle countings, to do, do the picking and the packing and the shipping, those type of things. So you can use that in order to go out and you can scan. Once you've barcoded your, your warehouse, you're able to take scans and scan in the, the box and say, okay, here's how many boxes I have of this stuff. And Instead of having to count each thing manually, you can just be scanning a barcode. Got it. And uh, you know, it's 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 funny because the clients that I've worked with, you know, who've had to do this, mm -hmm. there's always the question of do we count our own inventory? Do we hire an outside service? I have to be honest. Every experience that I've encountered where an outside service was hired has, in the worst case, turned out to be an absolute disaster. In the best case gave us what we felt was less than completely reliable information, you know, where we do the follow-up counts and the spot checks and find a lot of mistakes. And in my experience, probably the best experience I had with a client taking inventory was one of the disaster situations with the outside company, such that what we wound up doing was we asked them to leave, and we just got the employees on board and said, we need you guys to jump in. And what, we, what I noticed, what I observed, and this is, I was actually, uh, my role in this was I was an auditor. I was an auditor from the CPA firm overseeing the inventory taking process. And my job was to make sure I was doing the spot checks to make sure that it was being done properly. And we, we asked the company to leave. We said, forget it. There's too many. Everything we counted was wrong. It, 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 there were very few that were actually accurate. You know, when we, when we counted them compared to what they came up with. The employees of the company, because it happened, especially I think because it was a company that the employees really loved and loved working for, they cared. And they put great care into, even though it wasn't the most exciting work counting t-shirts, uh -huh. they did it. And they did it with pride and they did it with pleasure because they knew it was something that was helping their company. And, and, and well, I mean, as somebody who obviously works in the world of inventory, what kind of feedback have you gotten from companies about you know what I'm talking about there about whether you use an outside service or you know just do it yourself. Well, uh, we call one of we we call that type of problem. Uh, it looks better on paper, um, 
And we run into quite a few of those where customers either ask for us a feature or they ask for a specific thing and whether we've done research in it or even tried it, uh, programming it in and stuff, it, it always turns out to, well, that kind of looked better on paper. Once you get down to it, the it's just easier just to, to do it type of thing. And so um, with the cycling count, it's it's pretty much the same way. It's better when you're cycling counting to get someone who, who knows the parts, sort of knows the warehouse, able to move around. A lot of our customers, I mean, parts, when you're thinking, oh, that's apples and bananas, when really you've got Fiji apples and Granny Smith apples and all these type of apples that have different prices need to be uh, cycle counted differently. And if you hire outside, they're not, it's going to be hard for them to be able to tell the difference and type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious about something, and this just kind of, like I told you before we went live, you know, a lot of this stuff just pops into my head as we go because <laughs> I'm thinking about what we're talking about. Have you, and, and this may already exist, but have you guys thought about a feature where I can put my inventory software into like inventory counting mode? So that it will know to, so that I can still ship product out while I'm taking inventory, but it'll be kept track of separately, so I know to add or deduct the proper amounts from my accounts to account for what came in during the count versus what went out. Um, uh, we have talked about that a lot. We've had some of those cycle counting features. We've had them sort of planned out as far as as where things go. It helps that it's very much specifically when you're using mobile. Everything, uh, Fishbowl Mobile, everything is, is live so that when you do to get to that section where someone just receives stuff in, your, your mobile device knows, okay, there should be 15 here instead of the 10 that were here 10 minutes ago. Okay. And so, so and, I'm sorry, go ahead. Live, keeping it live really helps on that. And the picking process is very similar of, you know, as soon as you pick it, okay, this location has the parts I'm looking for. And keeping it live helps you to be able to do that so that people aren't crossing over and, and trying to pick from the same location inventory that's just not there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, and so just, just to clarify, so Fishbowl Mobile is, and I happen to know this, but I'm sort of asking this for the sake of the audience who may not. Um, so this is where I have my wireless scanners, right, to go around and take my accounts to scan the products in and out? Yep. The okay. wireless scanner similar. They they come in like gun mode, or they have a, a handheld device that looks similarly to a phone, except it's like four times as big. Yeah. <laughs> old, really old school brick phones look like that, and um, I mean they're made to last for a warehouse where guys are dropping them and and you know they get shoved under you know machinery and stuff like that, and so they're made to survive. But they're able to to scan those things and. And, and take care of that stuff for you. Right. Now, what about an iPhone or a Droid app where I can just have my employees download the app and use my phone to scan and count? Yeah, we've talked about that, and we've actually noticed that uh, Lowe's does something similar. I don't know if you've been to Lowe's lately. We, uh, me and Kevin Batcher, our son, the product manager, uh, took a trip there to, to purchase some hardware, and uh, one of the managers came over, and they were holding an iPhone, with this really weird blue case around it. And that case had a, uh, a barcode scanner on it as well as a credit card swiper so they could make purchases directly from their phone. And it was it was decked out. I think it had an extra battery life onto it and added a big fat rubber mat around it so that it wouldn't shatter the first time you dropped it. Or It'd probably still shatter if you ran over it in a forklift, but <laughs> maybe some other stuff not. Um, and so we, we've sort of looked into that and and... Uh, we're we're toying around with the idea still. Um, it's it, yeah, it it'll be interesting to see. It's one of those that I'm a little skeptical of, simply because yeah, it's nice. I already have the device and stuff, but the device wasn't really designed for warehouse play. So I'm I'm a little worried as far as you know people being unsatisfied with with barcode range. I mean, some of our our barcoding stuff can. And those those pallets that are way up at the top, you know, they go, uh, I think, over 50 feet, you're able to scan a barcode off of a pallet. And so you're not really going to get that off of the dro any of the droids or iPhones, but, you know, a lot of our customers, they don't need that. They're just a little smaller warehouse. They don't need that, and they already have a phone, and it would be really nice if they could utilize that as well. So we're, we're right. planning you know, and I'm thinking even in the case like you described where I have to go way up, uh, I, I've seen people already have, and they use it for taking pictures, a, a little thing you can put your phone on to extend it way up. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've seen those. 
So in theory, that could be employed in, 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 in this context to, to get to those hard to reach places and take those counts. Yeah. But uh, it's just because it's there's certain things that it just seems like almost a natural progression. Everything's going this direction. Obviously, the cloud itself, the apps for the phones, everything happening there. You know, QR codes. I was thinking it almost makes you know similar concept to barcodes, right? Yep. So very similar. You know, more and more you're seeing um, you know uh, all this technology head in this direction so let me ask you a thing because talking about the cloud you know we're talking about going into the future and taking all of our business small business technology with us into the future um, there's a lot of other programs besides QuickBooks frankly that are emerging that uh, you know handle accounting functions some like you have FreshBooks right that's mostly just invoicing so it would follow naturally I think for a product like that to incorporate inventory into their product since a lot of companies unless you're strictly service based are going to be invoicing for sales of inventory um, QuickBooks Online of course is their cloud based product you know which is actually catching up I think now in terms of it's got a nice inventory add on um, I forgot what it's called that works with uh, the QuickBooks Online edition um, so I'm curious uh, uh, Fishbowl uh, do you guys currently integrate with any software other than QuickBooks if not especially on the cloud side of things is it your intention to I mean are you looking into that are you looking to you know look at other accounting programs to see how can we integrate to make it more sort of flexible or you know make it available to people who don't use QuickBooks um, right now it's just QuickBooks QuickBooks is is sort of what we're integrating with um, we're branching out into quite the the international market as far as we've got a, a partnership program down in Australia and and those type of things and QuickBooks themselves is is moving much more up into their online edition specifically for those international uh, type customers and so we don't currently integrate with QuickBooks online but that is something we're looking into we're checking out you know what what it would take in order to program that and really tightening up our QuickBooks integration first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so, so it's interesting you mentioned international does um does the Fishbowl product have, or do you have plans for it to have a like a multi-currency feature like QuickBooks does? Uh, it doesn't right now. Uh, we've been in talks a lot about it. It's a very challenging feature set in order to put in multi-currency, and mm -hmm. um, the bulk of our customers just have other needs right now that have been overshadowing that one. But we're constantly in talks because we do hear it a lot, and it is it is up there as as one of the most requested features that we do get asked for. Right. So, and you know, Gina. Speaking of the uh, other cloud integrations that potentially might be available, Gina, who's watching us, Gina Rocky, uh, just makes a comment. Not sure how it would work with Zero. You know, uh, Zero is one of the biggest, probably quickly emerging cloud-based accounting programs. So, um, you know, again, is this something you guys see happening? You know, as far as trying to integrate with other programs like a, like a Zero or a FreshBooks. Or are you sticking well, with, with QuickBooks? With, Quick, or, uh, with Fishbowl Pipeline, uh, not doing any actual integration with an accounting package right now. We're going through Fishbowl Inventory. Um, the, the doors are wide open as far as Fishbowl Pipeline. We, we, we understand that. We kind of like how that is right now, and we're not married one way or another. And we know we're going we're gonna to have to make some choices in the future as far as what's the best to integrate with. Right, right. And uh, so, so what else? What else can we look for uh, coming up from Fishbowl in the coming months to coming years? Um, in the coming months, we're getting ready for Fishbowl Inventory 2013. I know we just released Fishbowl Inventory uh, 2012 plus, but you know, developers never sleep. Of course. So, um, the biggest features in there, we're we're integrating a lot of of new Java technologies that Java has out with uh, Java 7 and a lot of those add stability and speed increases which is a big demand on our customers when you know they're pushing out order after order after order uh, systems start to see you know some of those pains of all that processing and stuff but uh, some of these technologies will will help speed those things up so that's that's pretty much 2013 where we're really focusing on on those type of speed enhancements gotcha okay so we've got about a little more than 10 minutes left um, first of all, uh, tell us where do I go if I want to get Fishbowl? Uh, you go to fishbowlinventory.com. That'll take you right there. There's a, a free trial download. Show you some nice websites. Let me pull it up on a screen okay. share. 
So fishbowlinventory.com here. Uh, learn more free trial. We have a free 15-day uh, trial. They're able to download, try it on their own box, give it the full, you know, the full once over and stuff. Um, calling any of the 1-800 numbers, talk to our sales reps. They do great demos. They've worked with so many customers that, you know, once you get talking to them, they'll know exactly the features you need and, and help show you how Fishbowl will, will be work better for you. Um, talking with our customers as well, they'll be able to get you hooked up with uh, Fishbowl Pipeline, fishbowlpipeline.com. Uh, they can get you an account. You can try Fishbowl Pipeline, you know, try out the CRM features, do some emailing, get your, get your leads in there and things like that. But... Okay, and, and for those of you watching, don't forget that um, if you do uh, call Fishbowl, tell them Seth David from Nerd Enterprises sent you because I'm a reseller. I'll get credit for it. <laughs> there you go, Seth. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that shameless plug in there. Oh, yeah, you deserve it, though, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so, well, you know what? I got to, uh, you know, I'm going to have, I, I still have my uh, uh, free trial. Uh, for the fishbowl inventory program, you guys have been very kind, letting me kind of extend that so I can do my videos on it. So I'm definitely going to have to carve out some time to do some more videos on fishbowl, and then I'd love to do the same with the uh, with the pipeline product. So don't forget, everybody, if you sign up for fishbowl inventory, you can get a free year of the pipeline product to play around with that. There's, um, I'm curious, you know, talking about the pipeline product and CRMs. There's so much going on in terms of, I mean, I see a lot of CRM products now coming onto the market. Uh, and, and, and I love the one you've shown me. I'm just wondering as far as, and I know it's brand new, but I'm wondering as far as the future direction of it. Do you see as a developer uh, integrating the CRM with other common modes of, like, here's, here's the biggest challenge, I think, with CRMs typically is there's still a fair amount of work that I have to do to feed the information in. So I go in, I have a contact, I create a new deal, right, that I want to close with that contact. But if there's correspondence which has taken place between myself and that prospect, I basically have to feed it in there. You know, if there's emails and I want to take excerpts from emails, I can copy and paste it easily enough. What kind of integrations do you see as far as that kind of thing goes where maybe you can automatically pull from my email program so emails with that contact would just show up right there? Uh, similarly, my communications with uh, people on Facebook, LinkedIn, and you know all the social media sites. Um, any ideas about how that stuff might get integrated into a CRM like this? We haven't played too much with uh, the social media aspect, but yeah, that's a that's an interesting avenue to look into. Uh, we do have some developers playing around with some code and stuff with um, uh, bump technology, where the two people can bump phones and and as a way to entering leads in and things like that. And we really like how um, a lot of at least Google Contacts was the last one I looked at, or has a lot of you know find duplicates and and assign stuff where it's able to mesh together phone numbers and email address and contact names and really have a, a solid contact there with, with all the information in one spot. And we, we kind of like how that's going and we want to kind of uh, work towards that where they're able to, to pull in that information. Um, we're at a day and age where in technology to where, you know, it's so easy to integrate with, with these type of things that we don't, you know, there's really no need to have to enter in information, you know, two or three times uh, when we can just easily pull it and you're able to, to search one spot, pull up lots of contacts and be able to enter them into your, to your CRM quite, quite nicely. Right. Okay, great. So um, anything else, anything else you want to tell us about? Um, no, that's, that's it as far as development side. I think it's a great product, Fishbowl uh, Inventory and Fishbowl Pipeline. They work, they work in tandem very nicely, and and uh, they they help businesses. So, absolutely. Well, Heber, thank you so much for being well, here with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time out. I'm excited to see what you guys are working on as you come out with uh, newer and greater things all the time. All right. Well, thank you, Seth. All right. Thank you very much.